Thanks for tuning in to No Flag Radio. I'm your host, P. Back at it, jumping on the backs of these toxic masculinity punk ass making up motherfuckers out here. So today we talking about the transsexual white male origins of toxic masculinity, toxic white masculinity, and why white society tries to cover it up and act like it's not an epidemic all over the fucking globe. They need to get stomped the fuck out. So as y'all know, over the past couple weeks, a lot of us in New Black Media have been going in on Terry Crews for his antics in response to the black male community telling him to protect his own penis and balls when he's around his wife and his children. And we also have observed his anger at not doing anything. He projects it on the easiest target, black men who are straight and not homosexual or who would not allow a homosexual man to grab them. He projects it upon us And then he's making a wide sweeping media campaign against black men because of it. Terry Crews is the next coon to hop in the boat on some suck white zaddy ass bullshit. And of course, we're not having it in the new black media. So I thought of this topic of toxic masculinity and kind of how I wanted to approach it about a week or so ago. But I was like, man, let me just let more of this Terry Crews shit play out. Let me let more of the LGBT crowd run in and talk shit about straight people a little more. Let me let Cone and niggas, let me let more of the handkerchief head, brainwash, brain dead, bimbo type, yes, a bossing type of women out there. Let them jump into the field of play. Gotta give the miserable, misery driven hoes time to speak and, and act like they are doing something revolutionary for our black existence here by siding with anti-black male rhetoric which is all that this toxic masculinity thing is it's anti-black male rhetoric gotta let them do that and after the dust has settled in different places and kind of everybody's kind of took to their sides and took to their corners and decided what side they gonna play on now i'm gonna come through and ring the bell on this shit right because what people don't say about toxic masculinity is the history of it and how it has evolved from something that was actually targeting the personification of what it is to be a white male in the world, not black men. Toxic masculinity was made to describe and appraise white male destructive characteristics. There's history behind it. So let me pull up the history so y'all can all know that, look, this trying to paint it on black men, This is all new. This trying to paint it on black men without giving any context to it actually being all about white males to begin with. It's white supremacist evil. Punk ass Terry Crews, punk ass Bob, punk ass Ebony. Y'all bullshit is gonna stop. Okay, so let's get to it. An individual by the name of R.W. Connell. I brought him up in my toxic masculinity current event comment that I made about Terry Crews about a week ago. But this is a transgender sociologist from Australia who created the concept of hegemonic masculinity. All right. Hegemonic masculinity was what this R.W. Connell used to describe masculinity versus femininity in terms of European systems. Let me get the exact term that they use. Contemporary Hegemonic masculinity is built on two legs, domination of women, and a hierarchy of intermale dominance. It is also shaped to a significant extent by the stigmatization of homosexuality. So automatically, that screams to me that they're trying to make a way to say, if you're not homosexual, you're toxic masculinity. I know that sounds insane, but that's exactly what he's saying. This sounds like a transsexual male. He's supposed to be changed over to a woman in their little world. That's what they believe he did. Sounds like a transsexual male going to bat for gay people by saying, if you're not gay, you're toxic in your masculinity. Interesting in even their European, Euro-centered definition of this hegemonic masculinity. They left a lane to say, hey, and if you're a part of this hegemonic masculinity, you don't like gay people either. 
All right, just pay attention to that. Terry Crews probably found out that, hey, they don't like gay people, and he now he's on a soapbox about it because he's gay. Let's go on. But it says, hegemonic masculinity is the stereotypic notion of masculinity that shapes socialization and aspirations of young males. I'm sure they're talking about white males, European males, European Euro-centered, Euro-influenced males. And notice that in this definition, they're worried about young men being molded in their understanding of masculinity. This sociologist is concerned with where a young, impressionable mind is going to land. So understand, this is white supremacist social engineering. Don't forget that. Understand that. Just keep that in your mind, that they have that in the back of their mind of how a young male mind is being reared. Pause on that. No homo on that. You know what I mean? They have a concern about that in this defining and it says, today's hegemonic masculinity in the United States of America and Europe includes a high degree of ruthless competition and inability to express emotions other than anger. That sounds like white school shooter shit right there. All the shootings we've had over the past 30 days. That sounds like white male mass shooter shit right there. But let's go on. Inability uh, to express other than anger and unwillingness to admit weakness or dependency, devaluation of women and all feminine attributes in men, homophobia, and so forth. This is from the creator of the term hegemonic masculinity in his gender theory. He made a gender theory and he socialized it, obviously, now that we're having to see it. And he also made the term toxic masculinity and socialized it. All right? But I need y'all to notice that he's talking about American and European white boys. He didn't say parts of Africa. He didn't say the Caribbean. He didn't say black communities. He didn't say places that are predominantly where a bunch of black men are. Punk ass niggas like Lee Merritt. He said Europe and America. And European ran influenced places. And this is also the same individual who also explained that hegemonic masculinity can become toxic when it becomes physically violent and i'll get to that part so basically toxic masculinity is created by someone who comes from a culture of being scorned for his type of masculinity we all know the lgbt community has endured scorn or a measure of scorn having to sit next to traditional society for all kind of reasons because once they start adding the pansexual and pedophilia onto their little alphabet, you know what I mean? Once they started trying to appropriate the black struggle and say their struggle is our struggle, like, yeah, uh-huh. That's that bullshit. That's that bull fuck, right? Motherfuckers are going to hate you for that. Once they started siding with the dominant society's movements against black people, yeah. That's going to cause animus towards you, yeah. Once they started siding with the deep population agenda, people's like, oh, the gay shit, that's all of that is non reproductive sex type shit. Okay, that's not some deep population agenda. Yeah, people didn't like it. Once they start abusing people, like old dude in ATL running up raping men on the street, like, you know what I mean, that lowered the tolerance for their group's bullshit. You know what I mean? The negative stigma came and it stayed with them. They still haven't been able to shake all the dirt off from what they've accumulated onto their backs. Just in their short time of being kind of mainstream culture, gay is mainstream culture in America, they still haven't shook a lot of dirt off. I'm talking about all the LGBT whatever the fucks. I'm talking about all of them. Uh, what else? Once their overbearing, oversaturated social engineering came, forcing gay people on TV, forcing gay into the children's literature, forcing gay into the schools, forcing gay acts into movies, forcing gay stuff into cartoons for little children, trans gay people catching a fucking attitude, getting mad when people call transgender women men like they're supposed to be called. Look, you're a man, man. 
all that kind of shit, vilifying you for identifying a man as a man instead of by some fake made up, all because I chopped my dick off name that he wants to call himself, that type of shit. <laughs> all that bullying shit that LGBTQ does. Yeah, the scorn, all that shit, it came and it stayed with them. And it stayed with their scholarly, educator kind of community, their social engineering community as well. I don't want black people to forget that. I just want to say that. So like I said, this dude, R.W. Connell, came from a culture of being scorned for his type of masculinity. That's just what it is. He's a transgender guy. He's a homosexual. He's a gay guy. He's a part of the LGBT community. So it comes from a place of being scorned and being on the outs of traditional society. But he's allowed to, just from how he's presenting it, saying that hegemonic masculinity has homophobic leaning attached to it. I don't like to use that word homophobic. We'll just say anti-gay attached to it. You saw how he put that? but he's vilifying hegemonic masculinity, not painting it as uh, anti-animal, anti-woman. It's anti-gay people. He singled out gay, speaking from his scorned ass place. Y'all hear that? And because he's in a white supremacist vacuum with his writing and his pontificating as a scholar, quote unquote, he's allowed to, because he's white, scholarize and give a social outlet to his scorn and his insecurity about being gay and transgender and I don't care what nobody say if you wear a dress and dress like a man and cut your penis off you're gay I don't care what nobody say if you get penetrated by a man or you dress like a woman you're gay but back to what Connell is showing if you're white you're allowed to create a social construct to vilify who you want to at will, and in this case, straight black men is who's becoming the main target of this shit. You're allowed to do that when you're white. And you got people like Terry Crews that will wear his scorn as a coat of arms in their life and go around talking about toxic masculinity, not even knowing that a transgender male created that term as a way to address his interpretation of the scorn that he felt being a transsexual male being part of an underground ass community, LGBT, PG, TV, CSI, whatever, whatever, and him speaking up for the LGBT community, strictly about LGBT. So him giving a one-sided opinion of it, an opinion that's already anti-hetero normal, right? So if you're already coming into the playing field as being anti-hetero normal, already entering the discourse with a chip on your shoulder and a maligning of heterosexuality in your definitions that you're contributing to the discourse, hegemonic masculinity and toxic masculinity. You want some bullshit. Your movement is based in being conflict driven. It's not about being a solution driven narrative or a solution driven cause that's what terry cruz not going to tell you when he's talking about the floor is toxic masculinity yeah you dummy do your research you big dumb overgrown football playing bitch do your research if you did your research you know that the very movement that you're standing behind is anti you since you claim to be heterosexual but let me just say i do think terry cruz is gay so all y'all talking toxic masculinity it's it's a product of a transgender man's scorn combined with whiteness having the capacity to be given normalcy at a moment's notice in a white supremacist society. I've given this rundown before. I'll give the rundown again. We live in a white supremacist society where whiteness is allowed to have a narrative of normalcy painted upon them socially. They're able to have grab bags given to them economically they're able to have armies, navies, and bombs deployed globally in their name on a political front, politically speaking. That socially, economically, and politically, whiteness gives white supremacy access to all of those things. And this R.W. Connell 
access his ability to spread a narrative, let it spread all the way from Australia to other Euro white supremacist dominated places like America. So this is not even an American created concept. It came from an Australian and you coons walking around acting like you somebody tough, like you are the haughty of the haughtiest and you so ooh la la about this toxic masculinity shit when your dumb black ass don't even consider that it didn't even come from somebody black who don't even identify as a normal man. I wish I would be walking around this bitch. <laughs> Y'all walking around pointing at random black men talking about they toxic masculinity. Uh, Jerome, you toxic masculinity. Uh, DeAndre, you toxic masculinity. Bill Cosby, he toxic masculinity. Michael Jack, they toxic masculinity. Yeah, bitch ass nigga, you don't even know what the fuck you mean. Stupid ass nigga. You motherfuckers walking around parroting some bullshit from a transsexual. <laughs> and trying to appraise other man's manhood out here. Punk ass Terry Crews. I'm just saying, this is what motherfuckers is on out here in 2019. Stupid dumb motherfucker shit. Alright? So that shows me that y'all on some half ass movement with this shit. This is a whole church of toxic masculinity, and y'all ain't read the Bible to that motherfucker yet. So that's why I'm here. But let's not leave it there. There's an article from a website called Medium that came out January 29th of last year. And it was addressing toxic masculinity by name. The title is called The History and Health Consequences of Toxic Masculinity. Just as recent as last year, the first page of this article says, okay, what does masculinity that's toxic look like? And it just gave names. How many black names you see? I'm going to name off the names they name. Roger Ailes, Eric Bowling, George H.W. Bush, Bill Clinton, John Connors, Louis C.K., Bill Cosby, Andy Dick, John Edward, Blake Fairholt, Al Franken, Trent Franks, Morgan Freeman, Newt Gingrich, Eric Greedens, Mark Halperin, Dennis Hastert, Dustin Hoffman, Jim Jordan, Brett Kavanaugh, Garrison Keller, Alice Kaczynski, Matt Lauer, Danny Masterson, Les Moonves, Roy Moore, Larry Nasser, Bill O'Reilly, Michael Oreskes, Jeremy Piven, Charlie Rose, Eric Schneiderman, Russell Simmons, Kevin Spacey, Elliot Spitzer, Morgan Spurlock, Jeffrey Tambor, James Toback, Donald Trump, Anthony Weiner, Harvey Weinstein, and Leon Weisseltier. At all those names, how many black names you came up with? I counted about three. How many black names you saw? All those names are white guys. And people talking this toxic masculinity, black man, and they trying to pin it on Bill Cosby, trying to make it all about, uh, make it all about a R. Kelly, make it all about Chris Brown. I just named about 45 different names. I named almost 50 names and only three came up black. So when you motherfuckers like Terry Crews talking all of this shit, toxic masculinity and trying to paint it on black men, just as recently as last year, 45 names of white men was coming up in the media. All right? So I don't want to hear your bullshit. But the article goes in to say, what is toxic masculinity? Toxic masculinity is mostly defined by what it is not. In short, toxic masculinity is insecurity about being vulnerable and emasculated. Now, notice again, this is white society saying how bad it is to not want to be emasculated. And at the time, toxic masculinity was defined in Wikipedia. I guess last year it was defined and had its own little section. This year it don't. Wonder why they must want to make it hard to find. But wikipedia defined it as the traditional norms of behavior among men in contemporary american and european society again behavior amongst men in contemporary american and european society that are associated with detrimental and social and psychological effects such toxic masculine norms include dominance devaluation of women extreme self-reliance and the suppression of emotions okay these are all white names that are coming up this is why your tarana burks look like idiots with her motherfucking, um, the bridge is over, the bridge is over, face looking ass. That's why motherfuckers like the Vibe magazine, they look like idiots when they want to try to paint a traditional norm of black men as toxic masculinity when all research points to white males, period. Even in white male research points to white males as this being their traditional norm. 
The purpose of this is for the people who want to defend black male masculinity with talking points. I'm trying to give y'all some breadcrumbs into the source of this term toxic masculinity. Because see the root, they just going to call you a toxic masculine hotep and leave it at that. They're not going to give you no kind of research into even the term or the words that they fucking use. Especially since the research leads to white males being the predominant perpetrators of toxic masculinity. By definition. So that's why I'm here. That's why I do what I do. So we can go into the social media world and ride. But let's look up the word hegemony. Since we're chasing breadcrumbs, we broke down toxic masculinity. Let's look into hegemony more. If you look up the word by itself, it means leadership or dominance especially by one country or social group over others. I think it's interesting that they say countries or social groups because this is going to tie into what I'm saying about toxic white male masculinity being allowed to escape the narrative when it shouldn't. Now, what group of males do you know that's obsessed with dominance over other groups? Just by that definition I gave. Leadership or dominance, especially by one country, or one social group over others is white males, right? What group of countries is deathly obsessed with dominance over other countries? White males countries, shit that they have stewardship over. Over a decade ago, you know, when I was studying Fred Hampton, I came across the term white male military jingoism. It was a term that Fred Hampton had used. And I was like, all right, let me look this shit up. Because I didn't know what it meant. This jingoism. And the definition of jingoism, it's nationalism in the form of aggressive foreign policy. Such as a country's advocacy for the use of threats or actual force. As opposed to peaceful relations. In efforts to safeguard what it perceives as national interests. And all of that is, all that just screams white supremacy to me. Perceived national interest. We always talk about the white supremacist imagination, right? Them being violent as opposed to being peaceful. All of that screams white supremacy. But looky, looky here, they gave that shit a new name in 2019 and calling it hegemony. You know what I mean? That's the exact same definition I just gave of hegemony. So let's make that connection First, black men, women, and children. Hegemonic masculinity is giving up more proof that toxic masculinity is rooted in white male aggression, white male degeneracy, white male military force, white male violence. Terry Crews, he's squirming to paint this level of white male violence on black men. White males alone have scaled to such heights of unmatched atrocity on the earth and mister I put old spice on my nuts so white male hands can smell fresh after they fondle me as Terry Crews he got it on his mind to try to put us on top of this mountain and I'm just like man good luck motherfucker you and all the gay people and all the anti-black factions all the root articles all that bullshit in the world ain't gonna be able to help you climb that kind of mountain he just looks like an idiot considering that black men haven't prioritized making extensive militaries to be used for purposes of taking over other countries for centuries nor has the black man ritualized being on tap for some global degeneracy every time we called upon like white boys for ages have we not been paying attention to what's happening in israel what's that that's white male toxic masculinity carrying out aggressive forceful country relations just ask the carlisle group have we not been paying attention to britain recently talking about recolonizing zimbabwe zimbabwe is a country that went to war for its freedom it fought for its freedom it put out its guns for its freedom a free Zimbabwe full of warriors who fought for their independence from them. They're wanting to stoke those flames again out of thin air. What is that? That's white male toxic masculinity carrying out aggressive, forceful country relations. We got motherfucking uh, friends. They 
still trying to punk their former colonies. They got 14 colonies in Africa that they still trying to punk for the taxes out there. And these are African countries, former colonies of them, not one to be dominated by white males. And yes, the French colonies are still forced to pay taxes. They got to send it to the French treasury. And basically, if they don't, France has a history of sending in the French Legion motherfuckers to start a coup or try to kill whoever's the president. Y'all might remember a black leader by the name of Sylvanus Olympio. He was the first president of the Republic of Togo. And he was like, look, we don't want to be under French dominion, France. So he didn't sign a little colonization pact or whatever that they proposed. But he agreed to pay him a little annual debt for the so-called benefits that they got from the colonization, so-called benefits. And it was just basically the condition that, hey, look, you French motherfuckers, we know y'all are violent white supremacists. We know y'all will try to destroy the country before y'all leave if y'all can't be parasiting off the colony. We know that y'all will try to destroy the country, so we're just going to pay y'all so y'all don't destroy it. Same old things that they're doing out there right now over various countries in Africa saying, look, if you don't pay us, we'll just destroy your country. Again, white male violence, white male toxicity. And basically, the amount got so high. Once that amount got so high, this dude was like, man, well, fuck y'all motherfuckers. Look, we ain't finna be giving y'all no money, man. We just finna say, fuck y'all. We finna make our own currency. What happened? France sent in one of their little foreign legion sergeants. He went in there and he got $612 and killed their president, Olympio. Right? What is that? That's white male toxic masculinity carrying out aggressive, forceful country relations. Do we need to even look at America or can we move on? I mean, goddamn, I already said Bush, uh, the white author from a website called Medium, already named Bush as a toxic masculine male or white boy. Yet in white supremacist society, these people get encouraged. Y'all notice that they get encouraged, not brought down. Coons like Terry Crews will dance for these figures, but they try to tear black men down. He'll cut a jig for America's Got Talent, the vibe and the root, proverbially speaking, but he'll try to tear black men down. Roland Martin will dance for the Clintons and all their toxicity, but he'll tear black men down. You get it? So this is still self-hatred from slavery running rampant in the black community, at least amongst the Sambo coon ass niggas. Terry Crews, he's just another idiot, comfortable in Westerbork, as I say. And go watch my Cosby soliloquy if you want to know what that is. But he's just comfortable in his slumber as a celebrity before he makes his date of execution. And every black male who kisses ass and shows their will to throw black society under the bus, they always end up getting a lesson in what not to do fucking around with white supremacist society. Y'all know the OG Professor Black Truth, he says white supremacy always breaks its tools. And I'm just jumping ready to see that shit happen to Terry. <laughs> but let's keep moving. Back to R.W. Connell. In many of his writings, he has broken down masculinity into his own little personal categories. And like I said, his whole life is based on some scorn that he has for straight, heteronormative society as they call it and that's not just him that's a fixture in the transsexual community and if you've ever ran into one of these transsexual characters in real life or when you see them on social media you can feel what i'm talking about if you got some common sense i want to pull up a tweet from one of these guys on twitter just to show you how the psychosis is spread amongst their community and how the scorn look like just so you can know that that scorn shit that I was telling you about, that's some real shit. They dealing with it. Let me pull it up now. All right, here it is. This dude talking about cisgender women still talking about their vaginas and periods as iconographies and symbols of womanhood. Reeks of bioessentialist violence and eugenics. But okay. And motherfuckers went in like, how is a woman having a vagina violent or in any way related to eugenics. And that's what people was like, you're just reaching for shit now. You're reaching for shit that don't even have no proximity to the topic of what we're talking about. And people just went in. You're trying to equate the empowerment of one type of woman's experience with the demotion of another kind. Well, they was trying to say, they're acknowledging this motherfucker's a woman and I'm not going for it. But the 
trans is going on talking about uh, having a vagina is not what makes you a woman. And, you know, we threw all kind of, we threw the kitchen sink at the motherfuckers. But they were actually angry about the shit. Mad they can't be women. Scorn that they can't be women. They carry anger about that shit, all right? So every approach they make in society comes from their place of anger. Don't let them fool you like they're just a, your friendly neighborhood transgender motherfucker. They're on some angry, vitriolic crusade with this shit. And my comment, let me pull up what I put up. Okay, here it go. The sister like, I mean, are you mad that biological women converse about our reproductive systems regularly? <laughs> she just kind of kind of poking at him like, you jealous because we having conversations about real female reproductive systems, dude? Really? That's what you were doing? This motherfucker went in. And she's like, what kind of cis-phobic shit is this? <laughs> so I was like, yeah, I know, right? Toxic transsexuality. They just can't take their inability to appropriate organic womanhood on the chin. They got a soapbox. They got a crusade. They got to create terms to disparage real women. They are blatant madmen carving an unnecessary, nonsensical warpath with nature. And I put my laugh emoji up. Because that's what they doing, man. They on some bullshit. Period. But I had to throw that up to show y'all, look, these motherfuckers aren't playing with a full deck. They're not playing with a dainty, respectful, friendly neighborhood, transsexual kind of hand. They are a vitriolic community. Maybe not all of them, but recognize this propensity. Especially with a motherfucker like R.W. Connell, the creator of toxic masculinity. Especially somebody like him that's vilifying the more heteronormative forms of masculinity, like hegemonic masculinity, for instance. Hegemonic masculinity is a form of heterosexuality. Hegemony being a heteronormal based form of masculinity. I'm not missing that, right? So they got that seed for vilifying heterosexuality in that and defining hegemonic masculinity. And we can just call hegemonic masculinity toxic masculinity because so much of the hegemonic term has violence attached to it and... R.W. Connell tried to make a separation and say, well, it becomes toxic when you add violence to it. And hegemonic is just one of his little four categories of masculinity. I'll get into that later. He is trying to sell a social theory. So I'm assuming he's trying to sell this hegemonic part as a part of a whole. But OK. R.W. Connell made sure to finger wag heterosexuality a little bit by saying, Hey, you guys also hate homosexuals in his definition of hegemonic masculinity. So again, notice that it speaks to the scorn of their community. Some of their top scholarly minds still carrying the scorn. Always taking jabs, always being snarky, always being snide. I throw this motherfucker in with the vagina haters. The vagina hating is real out here. <laughs> but know that, that they converge on places like social media to try to spread their vitriol and try to get under your skin and all that shit. That's what they doing. We ain't playing no games with them, man. We not having it. But back to this R.W. Connell and his definition of hegemonic masculinity. He basically dices up masculinity into categories made by his transsexual behind. And we want to look at it. You can tell just by how he defines certain things. It comes from a space of kind of weak. I feel like I'm inadequate as a man. So I want to sell it to the world that this is normal and how to be. And that ain't how it is. Your inadequacy don't deserve a place in everybody's life. But first, the whole dicing up masculinity into categories says to me, first off, that black men shouldn't even be trying to process his bullshit. I'm going to just... I'm just going through the rigor of presenting it to my black male listeners so we can simplify our talking points around this to some quick access points, but he breaks down masculinity into categories. He calls it dominance, which is hegemony, subordination, complicity, and marginalization. It just sounds like some, some weak man shit. Now, to most black men, this shit sounds insane. Our masculinity is simple. If you're a man, you stand up for yourself despite the consequences. 
you stand up for righteousness despite the consequences. You defend your booty hole and nuts despite the consequences. All right? Those are the three types of masculinity. There ain't no four types. Those is what it is. All right? <laughs> Whole motherfucking societies have been built off of that. And we're living proof of that. Very concrete, situationally applicable shit. No need for elaboration or trying to scholarize our masculinity. Our shit is on some rites of passage shit for the black male. It's based in one man respecting another man or else type shit. So, you know, I don't know what Connor will be talking about. Our way has worked long enough. And this is my little motivational part of it to kind of motivate black men to not even listen to that shit called toxic masculinity. Don't even really focus on it. But our way has worked long enough to allow societies to be built and still be standing, even off the residuals that come off of our masculine efforts. Y'all get that? Societies are still standing based off of our works. Last I checked, the places on the map that aren't straight masculine havens, they're destroyed, they're uh, either in jeopardy of being destroyed or they're not really highly valued by any other place. Y'all notice that? Look at the larger continent of Africa. That's all I'm gonna say. Now, now look at Greece. It's ran by white dope heads with low birth rates. Europe, ran by white dope heads with low birth rates. America, run by white ventanil dope heads that can't have babies. And they constantly socially engineering all these anti-family politics every day. Reverse gender role confusion shit every day, right? The white male compass is eternally upside down. And that's why it's always a fight when we around a dumbass. We are the uprighters of society and the upright of society. The upright of the world, goddammit. That's what don't get put on blast every day. Okay? So, the world need to understand that white male downplaying of black male masculinity by whatever devices and social engineering they try to run with, the effects of them doing it societally and in their own lands or in lands where whiteness is a racial majority I should say let's put a big quote unquote around that when I say their lands right the lure of the spoils of black masculinity to places like Europe America Australia it's what's got they asses flocking trying to crowbar their way still into more black masculinity saturated more fruitful lands they still want to be they punk ass around us and around our lands where we be at ho ass motherfuckers the caribbean motherfucker africa motherfucker r&b and rap <laughs> god damn it all those places you can land culturally and energetically all those destinations, if you see where I'm going, got a majority of black people on them. All those lands got a majority of black people on them. That's where the life is. That's where the vibrance is. That's where white people go to regenerate themselves and parasite off the current of the community, the current of the land. Y'all see that? And when they, when they come through, because they have no melanin to store the information they pick up to really take in the light information of the ecology, they just suck places dry. They just, con they're succubus group of people. But what this whole toxic masculinity conversation boils down to is the white male narrative of domination and his obsession with dominating. He wants to dominate who you perceive as a man, who you perceive as, as a bad guy, who you perceive as a good guy. It's a real sticking point for white society because more ways than one, they don't dominate. In real significant ways, they don't dominate. And we've had this conversation before. Genetically, they don't dominate. Reproductively, they don't dominate. And looking at the white male, in terms of testosterone, they don't dominate. Black women have more testosterone than the white male. So just think about that. If the black woman got more testosterone than the white male, and you know the black man has more testosterone than the black woman, where does that leave the white male in his quest to be seen as the most masculine and everybody else is just jealous of him? Well, I'll tell you where it leaves him. He has to search out weird shit. 
to try to appear as if he's some sort of alien ass man some sort of some superhero type male from the furthest reaches of the universe type shit <laughs> he has to repackage white masculinity like some damn forlorn superhero masculinity type shit <laughs> it's like dun 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 cave masculinity man he's so evolved but yet very sensitive to gayness and he's so sensitive to the needs of transgender dick chopping off motherfuckers and I take pills so I can grow a beard looking motherfuckers sensitive to all the wildlife before he go out poaching and killing them he's the model masculinity on earth he's so sensitive to all this other weird shit right but look at who we dealing with we dealing with a weenie we're dealing with a weenie of a man basically what becomes evident is that a large population of white society identifies with white genetic failure to the extent that they obsess with domination and whatever points of engagement that they have with other males all right so they they think of so many peripheral ways intimidation exploitation all that to establish a foothold in the dynamic that is masculinity a terrain that they are not organically dominant or organically essential to really don't forget that shit but let me get back into the conversation of toxicity let's talk about police officers let's talk about white male cops most of the cops in america is white males an article in the huffington post written by maisha cherry she's a black woman she noted way back in 2014 after michael brown got killed r.i.p to michael brown talking about law enforcement in america not only has a race problem but it has a masculinity problem now you know cops as the most wife beating this ass animals out there they don't get caught up on toxic masculinity i keyed it in i keyed in toxic masculinity and cops and the shit didn't pull up still ain't pulled up in 2019 but the sister maisha cherry writes a law professor named frank rudy cooper he explains in a writing he did called who's the man masculinity studies terry stops and police training and he says Policemen have nearly unique powers to make others acknowledge them as quote unquote the man while ostensibly merely performing their duties. The short answer is that officers may get macho with civilians. Specifically, they may enact a command presence in situations where it only serves to boost the officer's masculine esteem. So we're talking about white men. And y'all know they play tough till they get shaped up. Badge or no, right? He goes on to say a situation that does not justify an acting command presence is what I call a masculinity contest. A masculine contest is a face-off between men where one party is able to bolster his masculine esteem by dominating the other. A prototypical masculinity contest is a bar fight. So, you know, he just goes into, so all this sounds like white boy. All this is coming up white boy to me. Toxic white boy behavior. Not black men. Male police officers may sometimes be tempted to turn encounters with male civilians into masculinity contests. Okay, which is what white males do in the police force, right? So then she writes, Officer Darren Wilson's account of the shooting of Michael Brown sounds not only like a Western film and an unbelievable one, but a Western film entrenched in a masculinity discourse. Although both men were 6'4", Wilson said that Michael Brown made him feel like a five-year-old boy. Y'all remember him saying, that's just how big he felt, and I felt small just from grasping his arm. Translation, I did not feel like a man. He was bigger and stronger than me. I was a little boy, not a man. But I must be a man at all times, right? So in my estimation, that was in her little assessment of it, but what I'm estimating and what I figure he was saying, Darren Wilson was saying a black 6'4", is more masculine 6'4 than a white male 6'4 with no gun in his hand no badge no blue wall of silence backing him michael brown didn't have no silly club he had no best he have no mace he have no police union behind him mike brown ain't have no kamala harris kunet backing his actions with no criticism mike brown was a toxic masculine six foot four according to the fear meter of white males 
That's all the toxic masculinity is. It's meant to address the fear white males have of black male presence. Plain and simple. But it's too late, bitch. We've been on Earth longer than you, and at the rate y'all reproducing, we're gonna be here longer than you. Just accept it and be honorable about it. But don't be out here putting these false narratives out, and don't do the coon roundup like Terry Crews, like Ebony, like Bob, uh, like the wayward thinking black LGBT members, the black trans, etc. No need to pull up a yes man choir to harmonize with. Because we're on to you white males and y'all's lies. We're on to white supremacist objectives with trying to marginalize the black family unit. We already know it's about demasculizing the black man. We've seen it since slavery, being American DOS. White masculinity is no mystery to us, is my point. So this toxic masculinity farce is only sellable to people who are dumb like Terry Crews or somebody who's just real young or really unstudied, who don't have a content of history and that's what this is see white society they fucked up when they put white males on the psychiatric couch <laughs> before black men regarding this because we pulling up articles about white men already going in on white men about this shit because white males have the longer more egregious history of toxicity by their own definitions we have more proof against the white male in this toxic funnel they trying to lump black men into Again, I told y'all, notice how they skip past all other expressions of manhood and go straight to straight black men. They ignore toxic Indians in Kenya. They ignore toxic Indians in Ghana. They ignore the toxic Latinos in Texas and Florida and Cuba. The toxic Asians in New York and California and Oklahoma and the beauty supply stores. Why? Because black men, we the kings of the motherfucking earth. And if a constant aggressor like the white male within white supremacist society can bring down the kings of the earth to look like they're on his level of being cave-like and just this rugged, individualistic, uncouth masculinity like I spoke about in my post on genderized mandingo fighting, if he can bring down the kings of the earth, bring us low and paint us with the brush that they've already been genetically and societally painted with globally in some sort of format, and these days it's the damn social media, then they can say, look, black men are bad too. That's all they in it for. They'll skip over prosecuting everybody else who blowing up the world, school shooting, bank shooting, just to say, but look, black men are bad too sometimes. Let's just talk about them after years of evidence that puts us in the place of being the most uncivilized men the earth has ever seen. Y'all feel me? And Terry Crews, he's going to help them build that bullshit up in our communities. And we ain't having it. Fuck you, Terry Crews. And any white supremacists out here trying to paint black men with your degeneracy just to cover up your daily white dirt. When we ride on you with first them, when we ride on you with race first, everybody does it. When we ride on you with make black America great, we're riding on y'all with all these sentiments for a reason. All that said, yo, I have a saying, y'all, that white supremacist society is the only group that will put their shitty draws on a clothesline and try to convince you that those are your shitty draws. That the whole world set up and watched them peel off their white butts like you don't know your shit and you don't know your draws and you don't know your clothesline, right? They'll go through hell and high water, campaign after campaign, week after week, to convince you that those are your draws. Like, you don't know your own shit stains. And Terry Crews and Bob and Ebony and all these other motherfuckers jumping on the Me Too bus, jumping on the toxic masculinity bus against black men, they don't know their own shit stains. But I want y'all to keep y'all head up, my black people. Look, we watch white people try to whitewash our history. I know my whole life I've seen it. They keep trying to insert themselves into the past where they didn't belong and where they never walked in the past they want to be where our footsteps were at right notice white society they don't want buddha to be white they want the pharaohs of egypt to be white they keep trying to make queen nefertiti white it didn't work us in new black media and in the social media sphere we just too many minds converging upon they bullshit now they want to be egyptian so bad but it never goes well because goddamn when that Water burger, honey butter biscuit juice be bubbling up on their backs when they be out in the sun for five minutes. That shows you that, nah, they ain't no goddamn Egyptians, right? 
We watched them try to gay wash our history, try to make Malcolm X gay, try to make Martin Luther King gay, try to metrosexualize mainstream black culture, try to softify mainstream black culture. It didn't work because we said, nah, we gonna come to a consensus that y'all are bullshitters. Y'all trying to bring that valley girl shit to every black person in the world and every black person in the world ain't falling for that valley girl affectation that you sold to the coons, right? You see, cool motherfuckers think that's a fast pass to being liked by white people. <laughs> Keep it real, that. Oh my God, like, oh dude. Oh bro, oh bro, oh, oh my God. Like, oh my God, you serious, dude? Oh, awesome, dude, oh, awesome. No, every black person ain't talking like that. They ain't rolling like that. That's just more white girl shit slash white boy shit, all right? Get that fucking shit out of here. You get that retarded ass shit out of here, all right? <laughs> and now we watching them try to toxically label our masculinity when all the history points to them and to everything they do being toxic. And we ain't having that either. So they gonna have to get right. They gonna have to come up off that. But don't forget to check out my Teespring. Yo, we got the dope, I don't like mayo, I don't like white bread shirts. We got the toxic masculinity shirts coming real soon. I'll post up a little notification when I get them ready and done for you. You gon' love it. You gon' want to rock it. <laughs> and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to hit that like button. Don't forget to hit that notification bell. So you know when I'm dropping. Get it, y'all.